Welcome everybody to We Have It On Draft. This is Monty and here is my co-host, Ryan. How's it going? Oh, very well, man. No dilly dillies on my hand though, so it's kind of... Yeah, I got a dilly dilly with me yeah. and we got episode one for you guys. This has been a long time discussion and you know we're finally putting it in the works so i hope you all enjoy it yeah this has been a very very long discussion since about fuck, i don't know mid-season so today well you're probably hearing it it's probably gonna be the 8th of february but yesterday uh a lot a lot of news happens uh josh mcdaniels pulled out of his head coaching deal with the Colts, they completely agreed, and he just pulled out of it to stay with the Patriots as offensive coordinator. To me, Ryan, I I think this means Bill's done soon. What about yourself? Oh, no, I 100% agree that Bill is done um, one way or the other. But you have to just think Bill said, like, he, he must have said something. I'm like, yeah, I'm leaving pretty soon. Yeah, I mean. Like, don't go coach the dumbass Colts when you can – remain in the system that you kind of created and that you – and also to keep in mind, I mean, Bill probably drove the point home that New England is the only place you've succeeded. It's true. And he's been very successful. They've they've only won two bowls when he's been on the team. Yeah. Damn right. So, yeah, I definitely think, I definitely think it's gone. But the capacity, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't – I could be this year. I don't think so. But – I think it's next year. I don't think it's any later than next year, honestly. I don't think like someone's staying around for three years from now, some kind of thing. Like I think it's either he's going to think about it this year or it's going to be next year, and I think that's it. That's my opinion on it. Think about it from McDaniel's perspective, too. You know, he we don't. Do you know the the contract deals with what he did? He resign with the Patriots, or did he, he got a, he got a pay increase? From my understanding. Okay, so you got to think, and if Bill doesn't let go of the reins by next year. McDaniels could go get a head coaching job somewhere else, but I think he's got it. He's got it. Like the only reason he stayed is because Bill leaving. I, I, I mean, that, he that's... took the job, and to think, who's going to want to take him now after he's bailed out of a job? Who's going to want to risk signing him and then have him bail out again? I don't know. That that I don't. That's Super not good. Move, by the way, Super shitty move. By the way. Yeah, that's real fucked up to be honest. Like but... the Colts are like, oh my god, we're bringing in like a guy who knows quarterbacks, he can work with Luck or Brissett. He's like, oh, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, he really fucked them. That's, I mean, you got to think that that might be payback for the deflate gate. Maybe. Maybe it was a whole scheme. I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, let's pretend you're going to go to the fucking Colts, and then you're just going to draw out. I mean, Kraft is petty, man. And, I mean, this is one thing that Adam – They too, you know. They're not – Yeah. They're mutually petty. Adam Sheff – yeah, they both very are. But um, Adam Schefter, uh, he – tweeted today that uh or yesterday that Kraft's putting it on the Colts again he will forever try and fuck that place ever since the flake gate is the quote that he got in a text um I believe I, it and Adam Schefter is definitely something you somebody you trust on that kind of stuff I mean let's put it this way when Adam Schefter says something you generally listen because Remember when the rumor was, oh, Matt is actually going to the Giants. And then Adam Scheffner, like two weeks later, was like, now it's all right. So. Yeah, Rapport Scheffner didn't say anything. Even until they, they reported Patricia, they reported McDaniels. All this stuff was true. McDaniels just pulled out of it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which is, which is just such horseshit, by the way. Yeah, well, and it makes you think, you know, that's why he's leaving because probably teams aren't going to go after to get him unless they're like, you know, unless they can lock him in. Even then, like, you just don't want it to happen again. Yeah, you just don't you don't know what his if what his intentions are, which kind of put the Colts in a real shitty spot because everyone has their head coaches now. So now the Colts are sitting here in February and they're trying to find a head coach, and that's shitty. Well, who, like, who are they going to get now? A good segue topic. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, you know, <laughs> I, I was actually I was looking at the head coach of candidates. Um, I don't know if John DeFlippo has an interview with the. Um, Colts. As of right now, he does not. But I know Frank Reich does. Yep. Frank Reich does, and I think I think he'll go there before. I think I think he'll be Frank Reich over uh, Deflippo. Deflippo. I personally am a Deflippo guy. You know that. I know um, you are. I, mean, I it's think it's not saying it's the right choice. I just think you know. No. Because. Um, I agree with you though. Yeah. 
I think because Reich spent time in the organization for a while. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. He was there for like four or five years or something like that. Yeah, uh, look at the coaches. Um, you know, most coaches spent time with someone either in the system or directly on that team. Yeah. Teams tend to look for somebody they know. And uh, that would, Reich would just make sense. I mean, first of all, it does make sense to like the average person. Why would you get the QB coach into Flippo when you get the offensive coordinator? I personally see just – I'm very impressed about his offensive mind with everything I've seen. He's so young. I mean, what you see with McVay is done so fast and with the Rams, it, it really makes me love to Flippo. He's coming from that great coaching tree, but Reich's coming from the same coaching tree. He's got a little bit of Tony Dungy coaching tree too, which was huge at one point. Um, also huge with the Colts too. You yeah, have that so, tree. That's if you were part of if you were his little kid. Yeah, they 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 got a spot for you. And he's got an interview, so I I would agree with you. Reich's definitely. I'd say he's probably the number one candidate right now. Yeah, there's nothing against Silva though. It's, it's just that um, he is my only, choice, but yeah. I should say I think maybe the flip was the better choice, but. You know, uh, Reich was there as late as 2012, 2011. So, yeah. like, that, 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 that's so recent. It's like, it's almost a no brainer. Mm hmm. No, it does. I'd say is he's a, lo he's a local uh, Pennsylvania guy. And then the other guy that they're pro probably interviewing from what we've heard is Dan Campbell. He's uh, He's been an assistant coach over with New Orleans Saints. They're very successful this season. He was the interim head coach with Miami well, Dolphins. Yeah. They did really well, too. Did very well. I don't think that's a bad uh, guy to look at. I don't think he'll get the job, but you know, I was an advocate that he kept the job in Miami. But I mean, it, Gase no, has done a great job, that. so I can't. Was that. That. I was also an advocate that he kept the job. I um, don't think that's the right. I I like Frank Reich better. But so, um, my thought process right now, though, is they got fucked by McDaniel's, and Ursa does not tend to take these type of things lightly. He does not. Um, after shit like this happens, it seems like he always wants to make these big moves. Like he made that big move for Trent Richardson. And two of the Which guys, flopped. two of the guys that I, yeah, I did flop real bad, but two of the guys I think could be like wild card swing for the fence choices is if they could get Jim Harbaugh or like Peyton Manning to come in here and coach. I mean, I don't. I doubt Peyton Manning goes straight to head coach. That seems like an odd one, but. Well, you know the the, the hard thing about Peyton Manning is that, like, no team was he wouldn't take a job as a quarterbacks coach. Why the fuck would he? He's Peyton. Manning. No, he would need to be a he need to be coordinator. I think the most likely fit for him would be taking a when he's ready to coach would be taking like a job at as like head coach at like Tennessee to take a college job first and then work up. Yeah, and even then, like, I just don't, if I, if I'm Peyton Manning, man, I, I mean, we might have totally different, um, you know, standpoints of what we're gonna do with Peyton Manning's life, but I wouldn't take a job as like a head coach of a college. Fuck that. Or, no, yeah. The thing is about Peyton Manning, and I a lot of people are split if he's gonna be a good coach. And one of the things that Tony Dungy said when he was there was he didn't think Peyton Manning would be a good coach because. Excuse me, because uh, Peyton Manning just wants everybody to be Peyton Manning. He expects so much more from the quarterback that most quarterback doesn't have. The thing is, he has luck, and if luck can play, Peyton Manning will turn luck into a star. He'll run a great offense for him. I would love that. That would just, as a fan, I would love to see those two work together. Right. I mean. I would also like to see too, because Luck was, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL before he became a busted ball. But um, my my concern with the, if I'm looking to sign Payman as a coach, I don't know what Jim Irsa has to say about that because like they had a weird kind of rift after the Broncos trade, mm -hmm. or the Broncos deal, or whatever happened. Um, I don't hate the idea of Payman going to the Colts, but I think he's an executive. I don't think he's a yeah. I'm not big on that one, but I do think it's a uh, it's something interesting. And then the other one I mentioned to you before, I think going out and getting Jim Harbaugh offering a big time contract, possibly doing something like what they did with Gruden, offer him like possible uh, ownership stakes or ownership shares, and they just going to do that though. Going big, I mean, they have the money. I mean, it's just about doing it. 
Uh, I mean, millionaires have a great organization, but it's just how much Jim Irsay wants to go out there and really just give a big fuck you to the world. We do not need Todd Mc, uh, we do not need McDaniel's. So I can say Todd McShay. <laughs> we yeah. do not need. <laughs> we do not need McDaniel's, and we're gonna go out and get a better coach, and we're gonna get somebody that we love who used to play for organization, led them to the playoffs, I think, at one point, or almost to the playoffs. Um, yeah. He – that would be a great move, I think. I think uh, Harbaugh showed his success in the NFL, even though he did have some problems with ownership, which, you know, Ursay's a character. That could be something that's brought up. He's a controlling but, character. It doesn't work with Harbaugh, man. Harbaugh wants his own show. That's his. He wants his. I know, but – Jim is like a control freak, man. So Har- Harbaugh is just such a good coach. He coached Andrew Luck in college. He, he his next call. The fit just makes sense, man. And if if Ursay wants to fucking put his his balls on the table and get himself a fucking head coach, then go get yourself Jim Harbaugh. And I think if he if he offered Jim Harbaugh a big enough contract, like. Offer and went around it with people are talking with Gruden somewhere maybe a little bit less or just ownership shares. I think that that'd be enough to get it done, and I think it's a good fit if he if you can get him to leave Michigan with the money. He's not leaving Michigan, man. They're thinking about offering him like a lifetime contract, and he can do whatever the fuck he wants at Michigan. Yeah, a lifetime contract. Like he he can have as many sleepovers as he wants. (laughs) A lifetime contract, though, but. He can have ownership shares, which is more than lifetime. That is more than coaching time. That is after you're done coaching, you still are making money. That That is big time coaches get that kind of thing. And it might take that to get him out of college, but I think it would be the right move. And I think he would leave Michigan if he got a big enough offer because the fit makes sense for him. I don't think there's many better fits for him than with the Colts. I just don't think he's leaving Michigan. I think that's where he's going to stay put. I, I agree that he likes it there in Michigan, but at the same time, Absolutely. college and NFL are not on the same level, and everybody yeah. will question somebody as a coach until they do it on the NFL level, and that's just how it is. Yeah, but I don't know. If, I don't know if Jim Harbaugh is really ate up about that. He could have. He could have coached. In, he could have coached in the NFL. He went back to college. Yeah, but he got a ridiculous offer. It made it made sense. He he was dealing with shit with his ownership. I mean, the the Michigan offer was huge, and I do agree yeah. it would take him a lot to leave. Yeah. But I also think that a chance to coach Andrew Luck, his ex college quarterback, getting possible ownership shares like how can you say no to that? I mean, that the city loves him too. Hey, he's loved in Ann Arbor, man. Yeah, I'm sure he, likes, I'm he, sure he, he is. College game. He likes the development game. I just don't think. I don't. Yes, think- how successful has he been at it? He's never won yeah, an yeah. national championship. Not with yeah, Andrew yeah. Luck. Not now. What? Not with Andrew Luck. Not now. He's never won an national championship. He's gone to the Super Bowl in the NFL. He's obviously a good NFL coach, and he took a shitbag team there. Yeah, they were pretty bad. They were like – they got like two wins before he came there. Like three years he took him to the Super Bowl. He's a good NFL coach. And he's I a good college coach too. I'm waiting for his crop to – What has he done? Him. Has he I'm won the Big Ten? Right no, he has not. Okay, so he's so why is he going to get all this money from Michigan just because people like him? Yeah, he brings he money in. Fucking loves him. Yeah, because he brings money in because people ESPN exactly. puts Jim Harbaugh on. And they love him. And then he has also like in college is different though. You have a recruiting class, and what his and um, uh, the fat ass that was there before him, they had a different recruiting class. They had a different system, and now he's just implementing his system. You have to give him two more years, and then we can judge. He just got a quarterback from Old Miss. You know, who was supposed to be this fucking bomb.com guy. I, I got to give him two years. In two years, if he's failing, maybe it was the uh, wrong move. But I think he, I think his determination now is to turn but, Michigan into what it was when he was there. But you're talking about this lifetime contract, and he hasn't won yeah. the Big Ten yet. And you really think that Michigan, I think Michigan is, will give it to him. Yeah, the, fuck, uh, is, fuck it, they, they love him, but they also hold everybody to a higher standard. If you can't win a Big Ten championship in the next couple of years, then why would they give it to him? I mean, their last Big Ten championship was with Lloyd Carr. Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna. But they get all the big recruits. They, they are now because of Jim Harbaugh. They they've always gotten big recruits. 
not like they do now, though. Like, I mean, Jim Harbaugh's big. He's a good Michigan, recruit. Michigan recruiting class was pretty weak under Brady Hoke. Rich Rodriguez was a disaster. For it's, I mean, it's not it's, it's not like a Nick Saban situation. He's not sitting here winning every single year. Like, why would you leave? Like, he's not having this ridiculous success at a college level. But he's not, if he, but you also have to give him time to build his – implement his draft. His, I'm, his I'm sure he can be a good college coach, but he hasn't proven to be a great college coach yet. No, he hasn't. I still think he can be that, and I think that Michigan's going to try to. They're going to. They're going to roll those dice. That, that very well be true, but he hasn't. But there hasn't been enough to me to come to rule out him going to the NFL. I mean, people are still talking about Nick Saban going to the, to the NFL, and I don't that's know why. And he's they're really they're not even close. I mean, he's taking interviews, so. Yeah, but he sucked. I don't know. Maybe maybe he can. Maybe he just needs a little more development. I don't know. But I don't know. I think I, at the end of the day, I think it's a good fit. I don't think that he's leaving for for chump change, but I think with the way that Jim Irsay can be and he just wants to get back at people and really, you know, assert his dominance, he can – if he wants to put his nuts on the table and get a guy, it's going to be Jim Harbaugh. But uh, we've talked enough about this. So let's move on to the next subject. Jim Caldwell. <laughs> Jim Caldwell. As, uh, just on a side note, I do think that would be – that'd be an interesting head coach talk. Um, I think he would at least be a good – I think they might have had their coordinators already, but I'd be interested to see him brought in some role in that organization. I would say just have him there for like a year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just think he's – I mean, that would be a good place for him to end his career. He's a good coach where to an started. extent. Yeah, where he started. Um, yeah. Let's go to Nicky. So, Nicky. Yeah, Big Dick Nick. Big Dick. I heard that channel a lot. Yeah, out there in wanna, Philly. I want to point out there. That trick play in the Super Bowl, that was from the Lions playbook. I'm sorry. I just it away. What, what so, did you guys yeah, run The Lions that? scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl, and we won. You're welcome, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll post the link later. It's uh, the exact same play the Lions called against the Packers. We'll post that one on our Twitter, um, at Have It on Draft. That's right, baby. All right. Let's go to Nick Foles, man. Do some All Nick right. talk. It's a huge, huge topic. I mean, especially because – Teams are hurting for quarterbacks, and they show with Jimmy Garoppolo, you can trade for one instead of just drafting one and trying to, you know, build it up. So for me, with Nick Foles, like people are talking about if he's going to be traded, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when for me. I don't. Maybe maybe they'll wait until the start of next year, but I mean, his draft stocks so high right now. I find it hard that they're not going to sell high on him. But again, it's a matter of if, not a matter of when. They will trade him eventually. With the, before that contract's up, they will trade him. I think you know. I think they're gonna. They're, they're definitely just gonna fucking have to. Man. You you can't you can't have the Super Bowl MVP as a backup. Also, he played well. Like he played very well. Very well. well. Which not, may- not, sorry, obviously he played well in the Super Bowl, but he played very well up until that point as well. It makes you it makes you wonder too. Everything about Wentz and Foles, like they, we know they have a great coaching staff there. You you have to wonder how much that coaching staff plays into both Wentz and Foles. How good these guys really are. You also, a side note too. You also have to realize for the Philadelphia Eagles, um, if your coaching staff is getting this stacked, they're going to get taken pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, the flippo, the, the flippo and Wright right could be gone this off season. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And Jim I think Paul's if Wright gets taken away, DeFlippo gets an offensive coordinator job with the Eagles, and that's a dream made in heaven for at least for a year with them. Uh, if they can hold on to Flippo because Reich's gone. Um, right. They need they need Wright to be hired away now, though, um, if they want to keep uh, at least one of them because they're going to lose DeFlippo to an offensive coordinator job right. soon, if not. Uh, I, I agree. And, but um, Anyway. Yeah. Um, where do you think it, where do you think it goes? See, so here's an, I was going to throw an interesting little uh, wrench in this whole thing that I kind of discovered today. Everyone's talking about this two year contract that Nick Foles have. I did some like heavy research into this, and I can't necessarily. It's a weird contract, man. It's not a normal one at all. Like, so from and stuff? so from my understanding is he signed a five year contract last off season. But the the situation is, if he's still on the roster in February of 2019, he automatically becomes a uh, free agent 
if he's still on the Eagles roster. But to me, I'd assume that means if he's traded before then, a team gets a gets a starting quarterback who just was a Super Bowl MVP for four years at $5 million a year. Which is insane. That is huge. You know what kind of trade value that is? They're going to get a first-round pick for him if that's the case. Oh, yeah. Fuck at least. Yeah. More than that. I was say, you cannot trade just a first-round pick. You're paying for that salary, dude, because you can get other people involved in that game. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what That's cheaper than a first-round rookie. Yeah, fuck yeah. It's Nick Bull. It's a guy who's been in the NFL. That's what we were talking about this with Jimmy Garoppolo, man. When people were like, he's not worth a first rounder. He fucking is. He because was. he has the NFL experience. Mm-hmm. And he's so big. And but the biggest thing with Garoppolo is that now he got traded. Now he's gonna get signed to a huge contract. Foles, Foles is got supposedly, allegedly, <laughs> four more years. Of like five million dollar a year. Bulls has got to fire his fucking agent. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Now to be fair, that was a good deal for a backup though. For a yeah. backup to make five million a but year. What, but what does that do for him? I don't get it. Because it's just like now they want to trade him if he does well. Like I would just sign a two year deal because it's you're getting it's automatically void if you're still on the Eagles. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean they're gonna they're gonna trade him eventually. I don't know if he has any. He doesn't. Have, he probably doesn't have any say in where they could trade him. Maybe that was almost like their equivalent of a no trade clause. Like, ah, oh, nobody's going to trade for Nick Foles on a five year contract. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's banging down the fucking door. Yeah, dude. I don't know what the point of it is, but um, like this is this is big, and I and I I, had, I was looking into the. People would want him, and I was thinking the people who are going to want the most for him are going to be the teams that didn't don't have an extremely high pick this year, and the teams that don't have a ton of salary room. And my number one guy I was thinking of, um, you know, former NFC East head coach with Tom Coughlin going to the Jaguars. Yeah. I mean, that would I mean, make sense. He uh, won a Super Bowl already. He's going to have an even better defense in Jacksonville. I mean, Zach's I mean he can go ahead and get the only other head, the only other quarterback to beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, other than his old one, Eli Manning. I think that fit makes sense to me. Uh, it's a great deal. They can they can keep that young team together with that. I'd give up a first round pick if it was that Jaguars for Nick Foles. Also, too, I mean, what's good about the Jaguars? What's good about any AFC team getting him? You don't have to face him again. You're not seeing him again. You know, and he for- knows all the play. He knows the ins and outs. He can definitely have that. It's not a huge thing, but it's a little caveat that can actually help or hurt a team when you get a player like that. Like when the Lions um, this this year, they drafted a guy, Brad Kaya, out of Miami in the sixth round. He was in the practice squad. They waived him two weeks before they faced the Panthers. The Panthers picked him up just to talk about what the Lions did. Mm-hmm. And that happens all the time. I know this is oh, – yeah. And it's not – doesn't do that much, I feel like, but, you know, something. It's, it's um, good. It's a little insight. But um, anyway, but like – the thing is, I think the great about the Jaguars too, is they still have Bortles. If you're getting this guy for five million dollars a year, even though you get him the first round pick, I mean, you expect him to start, but you expect a, you expect him to start eventually, but you also expect a, a rookie to start eventually. I mean, you could always trade him, I guess. That's not ideal, but my, my ultimate thing I'm saying is you can have him compete with Bortles. You don't have to give him the job straight up. You can let him compete. Yeah. I mean, if he's if he's only on the, the team for $5 million a year, there's no reason you have to start him right away. Even though I do think you'd win the job, you can you can get the best guy for your team. Yeah, and that, I don't could think, bring, that could bring out like another level in somebody. Mm-hmm, I don't think that they're ready to move on completely from Blake Bortles yet, so I think that'd be good. To be fair, nor should they. I know I was a big not Blake Bortles fan. But it's kind of hard to make the playoffs and with a guy who did not do bad. It wasn't like he was dragging the team down. They didn't do great. So I, I, I would see why it would be hard to move on. And it could mix up some chemistry. Like, clearly it worked. Mm-hmm. I think maybe next year, in the play, if they make the playoffs next year and they just fucking flop, maybe it's time to get, like, a Kirk Cousins, you know, Nick Foles. But yeah. where, where do you, um, you think Jacksonville is the best choice for Foles? That's what I think. What do you think? I was thinking the Bills. Bills, tell me why. Well, let's think. The Bills are not getting Tyrod Taylor back. He's not coming back. 
and he should. Yeah, they, they don't they don't want him. That's me interesting yeah. to see where he goes. Fucking racist. <laughs> yeah, but they get, we'll get black quarterbacks all the time. They like Cardell Jones and EJ yeah. Manuel. I don't get Cardell it. Cardell Jones and uh, EJ Manuel. Yeah, um, I just think it's a better fit. I think it's a nice, easy, smooth fit. Eagles don't have to say in too much, and he gets to face the Patriots twice a year, and he can start building his own little dynasty. He's got a good running game, LaShawn McCoy. You know, it's kind of hard to beat right there. Um, the Bills are kind of shaping up. Hey, I, just, I, just, I like, hey, I like he beat, it there. He beat the know? Patriots once. I don't think uh, playing the Patriots twice a year is a selling point. <laughs> I like I, I, that was personal. That was, that was personal for me. I just think <laughs> Nick Foles fits in the best there. Good running game. Doesn't have to do that crazy much. They were 9-7 and seven with Tyrod Taylor and Nathan Peterman. Um, I just think that's the best fit for him. I don't think he should go to New York City. I know people were saying, oh, let's go to the Jets. I think the media would get to a guy like Nick Foles there. I would say the Giants more, to be honest. But you have to figure out what's happening to Eli first. But, I mean, again, $5 million a year. Who knows? But, I mean, they're not going to trade a first-round pick for him. So, they have to the, take a second. new contact information, now I'm kind of like the Browns got, should probably go after him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, God, go. God bless Nick Foles if he goes to the Brown, but Browns. Wow. But Bless his soul because he'll get hurt in the first week. Yeah. But, um... I don't know. Like the, other, the other team, I think, I mean, you can throw any team that needs a quarterback in this, to be honest, but um, the Cardinals are another team you got to throw into any quarterback com- conversation. Yeah, absolutely. They don't have a single on their roster. They need somebody who can play next year. You're not, you don't just need a rookie, and they don't have that high of a pick. They need somebody who can play for them next year that they can put they on the they field. They don't have a quarterback on the roster? Do not have a single one. Yeah, they should fix that because you should not have that. Just sign somebody. They're going to have to sign some. This is a good free agent class. You got probably Tyrod, Teddy Bridgewater, Case Keenum, uh, Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford, I feel like you could see just be like a holdover spot. But we'll see over everything. It's going to be a really interesting free agency. You know what's funny is with Nick Foles, um, I saw Del Flippo has an interview with the Vikings. Yeah. What if he is able to bring Nick Foles to the Vikings? That would be cool. That would be interesting. That would be very cool. I, I was thinking the, uh, earlier that what if the Vikings don't go with any any of the Which three? is fine. I think that's more than fine to do because they yeah. show they, didn't, they got dicked up in the playoffs, and maybe I, they can just go, well, Case Keenum, what would you do, I, man? Yeah, I mean, I'd rather Nick Foles than Case Keenum. I mean, that's a real switch. But, I mean, I think – at the same time, Case Keenum did this all year. Nick Foles just did it for the playoffs. It might, I think that might just be recency bias, but, I mean, with that contract, yes, I would. With that contract, yes, I would. Yeah, exactly. And Because, you know, Case Keenum can pull that point and then be like, well, I was good for the whole fucking year, man. Mm-hmm. That guy was just a flash in the pan. They'll be like, well, whatever. Yeah, well, we're not giving you $20 million a year, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they shouldn't. I don't I – mean, maybe they should. I don't know. I wouldn't if I was a team just because I'm not giving – Case Keenum, twenty million a year. That's absurd to me. If he does it again, yeah. Case yes. Keenum, you know, Case Keenum, twenty million a year, man. Well, Never what about uh, Alex Smith at twenty three point five million a year? I thought it was seventeen point six. It was four oh, years, ninety four million, seventy two guaranteed. Yeah, um, that's. I think what? that's a fine deal. I don't think that's that bad. Just looking at the court, like the top tier quarterbacks that are getting signed, I don't think that's that terrible. Yeah, what, I mean, with all of this going on, you're going to see quarterbacks getting paid more often. But let's let's okay, dive so into like this a little bit. So, yeah, so let's dive into this a little bit. So Alex Smith got traded to the Redskins for a third-round pick in Kyle Fuller, which I personally think that was too much with Fuller. But, you know, they made the best of a bad situation of fucking up that Kirk Cousins contract. But Fuller's such a good corner. Such yeah. a good corner. Uh, nickel and corner. Marcus Peters. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's gonna be good. Um, what do you like think? It. What do you think of this whole thing? Um, it was kind of like I don't want to say it was like a desperation where they were getting mugged, but they, they, they did what they could. And you know, if you got to trade Fuller, you got to trade Fuller. You're gonna pick somebody up. You're gonna, you're gonna, you have, you have cornerbacks to help you out with that. I'd rather I'd give a second out. rounder and something and give up Fuller. Like that was tough for me. No, I understand. But, I mean, they wanted – I mean, you got to think they needed a solid, uh, to solidify the quarterback position, and that's what they did. The outfit mm-hmm. is not bad. They didn't – I don't think that's that much money. I think it's a, it's a lot, obviously. But I think they solidify a problem. Now they don't have to worry about the QB right now. I think they still yeah. draft one. Don't get me wrong. They should still draft one. Yeah, I mean – They can focus on other elements of the team. And I understand Fuller, as good as he was, they can bounce back from that. 
And Alex Smith's coming off a career year, so you got to take that into account. Um, yeah, I I do think it was a good move by the Redskins, even though I do think – I don't really think the contract was too crazy, to be honest. I mean, that's just what you're going to see from a lot of these quarterbacks coming in the future. Uh, they're going to get paid more and more each year. And, but I didn't like the idea they got a fuller. But, again, they made the best of a bad situation. They got their self a quarterback. So I can't blame them. Yeah, no, exactly. And we see – we're looking at teams that were even in the playoffs, and we're like, what could they be if they had a solidified quarterback? And Alex Smith is a solidified quarterback. He's a good qu- He's a good leader, too. Um, yeah. That's for sure. Um, and I'm I with you. I, I, I didn't hate it, um, but still draft a quarterback this year. I mean, it's a big, yeah, it was a big move. Um, definitely get a quarterback here after this, a placeholder, go out and draft one. But I mean, another reason it was because such a big move is people weren't thinking, oh, wow, Alex Smith is on the Redskins. People were thinking, oh, wow, that means Kirk Cousins is gone. Oh, see, I thought, oh, wow, Pat Mahomes time. Yeah, um, that's true. I thought that too. Not a lot of people were actually thinking about Alex Smith. Oh, yeah, but like Kirk Cousins is fucked. He's long gone. And they knew he was gone. Yeah. I, I, th- I was thinking possibly transition tag him, but there was a lot going on with this. Uh, so, Kirk Cousins, he's a free agent now, right? He's gone to the Broncos. You think so? Do you think, do you think the Brudskins franchise tag him? I don't know why you would. I mean, to trade him. Oh, to trade him? But, no, I don't think they would do that. I don't think they would either. They just called I... out for Alex Smith. Because gonna... I feel like if they franchise tag him, I mean, teams aren't going aren't stupid. They cannot sign like they will not be able to sign a single free agent until they unfranchise tag him because they'll have all that money, uh, set, like focused on him. So they don't feel able to sign anybody. So or teams will just fucking hold out on them, get their free agents, and if they're playing hardball, they're not going to get anything. And with they transition, to, which I mean, the franchise tag's thirty four point five million. That's a lot to pay a quarterback for one year. For one, and like yeah, as you said. Teams aren't stupid, man. Like, and that's like a Volman esque GM trade. Except, except the Browns, they would <laughs> do that. They'd be like, "Oh, we have a lot of money and suck." <laughs> dumb. Like, that's like a Volman esque trade. Like, well, we're gonna franchise tag him, and you're gonna have to trade for him. And other teams would be like, "No, I'm not gonna fucking do that." Yeah, <laughs> it's Kirk Cousins, man. It's not Tom Brady. It's mm-hmm. not old Tom or younger Tom Brady. Um, they're not gonna franchise tag him because, as you said, teams aren't stupid. And it's gonna it's just take gonna be a whole half cap space. Just, can't be a free agent. If I was the Red Team, and just move on from Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that shows over. You just gotta, you gotta let, you just gotta get him out of your life and just let Thanks him go. Service. Away. We love yeah. you. Um, well, no, you don't. You franchise tag that guy like twice, twice. So yeah, just fucking. I should just fucking paid him. But so where, where, where's he going, man? We got, we got to figure out where he's going. Uh, my choice. He's, he's a single lady. I think he's going the Browns, man. I think 110 million dollars in cap space. Near near where he's from, he's from Michigan, kind of local. They have a lot of draft picks to get him some talent, uh, as well as Josh Gordon, if he can stay clean. That's a big time receiver for him. Joe Thomas is coming back. I think that's a good fit Even for him. Njoku is a good young player. Saquon Barkley. Yeah, man. I mean, and I think that uh, they're going to offer him like thirty million a year. I think to go there. That's that's my guess. It's my, it's been my guess for a while. I think he's going to get paid thirty million a year if he goes to one of these like Jets Brown teams. Yeah, teams who can just ball out because they suck. How about yourself? Um, I'm going to go with the Broncos. I I don't. I think I don't think he's a money guy. I think he's very frugal. He was living in his his um uh, his in law's basement for the off season. Like he didn't he didn't move out of there until he had a kid. I think he, mm-hmm. I don't think he gives a fuck about all this money coming in. I don't think he's gonna get attracted by a little gold. I think he wants to win, man. He spent time in an area of the NFC East where he would get dicked around by decent playoff teams, and he would never really make it, or he'd make the wild card. I don't know his playoff record. It's not good, though, because he wasn't there all the time. Um, how many times did he make the playoffs? Twice, but I think one was with RG3. Yeah. So, well, yeah, one, one was one was RG3's rookie year. So, once. Mm-hmm. Once with him. I just think he's ready to win. He's a proven NFL quarterback, and I think he's ready to win now. I think that's where he goes with the Broncos. I know they, they're not going to be able to sign him for a bananas amount of money, but he'll get, like, a Stafford-esque contract with the Broncos. 
Yeah, I mean, he's going to get enough. He's going to get $25 million probably at least from the Broncos. But, I mean, $5 million a year annually, if that's how much he's getting, it's hard to turn down. And, I mean, the Broncos make sense. I mean, if you want to go win a Super Bowl, he's a competitive guy. I think that does make sense. But at the same time, I don't care if he's frugal. I mean, this is not about him. This is about his kids and his kids' kids. He's about to have money that's going to help his entire family out. And that $5 million a year is a lot of money. And guaranteed money is going to play into this too. And I think you'll get more guaranteed money from the Browns. I understand that. I don't think it's a factor. I don't think he's going to be like, money. Like, I, think I, he just, I don't think he is. It's not, I don't think that's how he rolls, man. I also think this new regime, as much as I'm shitting on the Browns, with Dorsey and uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Wolf from the from Green Bay. They're establishing a very good front office who oh, I yeah. think are going to make a good pitch to him. You can make a good pitch. And, and again, we always say – I don't disagree with the Browns pick. Like, I'm not calling you an idiot. I just mm-hmm. think that the Broncos are a better fit for him because I think he just wants to win. I think he's tired of being in that loophole team. And how long is it going to take to get the Browns going? I think he wants to fucking win now. That's why he wanted to get paid all a bunch. And, and, you know, I just think – and maybe maybe there could be a surprise team too. I mean, he could go to the Cardinals and make the playoffs. I think he goes to the yeah. Cardinals. They can't afford him though. Um, I'm not really surprised, but I also consider the Jets for the same reason as the Browns. And also, there's more of a money aspect with the Jets. I mean, New York City is big time market. You're going to get a lot of endorsement deal money if you're in New York City. Uh, set up your career after football. You can get a media job so much easier if you're working in New York City. Uh, there's a lot to that, too. There's a lot of financial aspects to that, as well as them probably able to offer close to $30 million a year. That's somebody you can't count out the Jets, but I, I honestly prefer – I don't know if I prefer the Browns' future. Jets did a good job building that defense, so the we'll Jets see. Did, the, the Jets did pretty well last year. Yeah, they did, and nobody expected them. Uh, my wild card team as well, though, is uh, the Saints. Drew Brees is a free agent. Maybe they try to go young. Maybe oh, they yeah. put their money there instead. Fuck yeah, I can definitely see that, man. I can definitely see it. And I, I, you know, I kind of always am wondering when are the Saints going to break up with Drew Brees. And now Everyone's waiting for it. Now's the time. I think now's the time, man. If you can get Kirk Cousins, break up. Yeah, if you can get Kirk Cousins, it's worth it. I mean, you got a really young team. Absolutely. I mean, they had two of the both – rookie, both rookies of the year were on the Saints. Saints. Offensive defense. Lattimore, Lattimore and uh, – Lattimore Kamara. And, uh, Kamara. Yeah. And that's the thing too, man. Like, do you want to build this team – because you need a, a decent to good quarterback to start winning. Drew Brees is great, but for how long? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, And I think uh, people will talk about if Kirk Cousins is a product of his system. That doesn't matter if he goes play with Sean Payton. Sean Payton will get the best out of him just as well as Jay Gruden did, if not better. Yeah, well, product of the system. Are you telling me Jay Gruden's a better coach than Sean Payton? No, but he does do a good job building that system. I mean, he'll, train, he'll get Sean, Sean McVay where he is right now. They're well, all. I agree. And when Kyle Shanahan. And Kyle like, Shanahan? Too, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I. No. I, I would rather have Sean Payton coach somebody. And Kirk Cousins doesn't need to be a product of a system. He's already gifted enough that he can go in and he can play with the team. As long as it's not some crazy yeah. fucking West Coast offense or something. So, yeah, I think that's another way you could see him go. Um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with him. For the same reason uh, I was actually going to say the Steelers, too. They might just be running to move on from Big Ben. Yeah, if but I heard Big Ben's coming back another year, so I don't think that one's happening. But no, he doesn't. Okay. That's what I heard. Uh, I was spitballing. And the Bengals yeah. too. Bengals and Steelers. I think that could be it. If the Bengals, because if you're on the Bengals, man, and I can get Kirk Cousins, I'll get Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. I mean. All right, I'm not going to just ignore that one. Okay, I mean, I do like Andy Dalton. I don't think moving on from Andy Dalton to Kirk Cousins is the right move. I think you get Andy Dalton much cheaper and you get Kirk Cousins and build that team better than what you're going to have with Kirk Cousins for 30, 30 million. Nor do they really have the money. That's true. Um, uh, you know. Anyway. So there's going to be a lot of other ways all these other teams are talking about and get quarterbacks. There's a couple guys like Tyrod and Teddy, and we'll talk about those. We talked a lot about free agent trade, though. 
this is a draft show. Let's talk about the first round QBs, who we think are yeah, going to end up in the first good. round, where they can go. Uh, so, my favorite guy personally is Josh Rosen. I don't know how you feel yeah, about that. Yeah, I obviously like Josh Rosen. <laughs> I you think I love Josh Rosen. He's tell the, me, just tell me about Josh Rosen. He's you tell him. You said. He's the best passer in this draft by far. He gets criticized for him being too smart. Like, that's it's retarded. Like, oh, he's not coachable because he's so smart and he questions people. All right, cool. Like, that does that remind you of anybody at all? Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning. These guys are so smart, and they think they're smarter than everybody else. And Josh Rosen oh, because they are that smart. Like, he is football smart as well as just normal smart. And he is a – Gifted talent, and he can he can throw the ball just as well as anybody in college football, maybe with the exception of Josh Allen, but he is much more accurate than him. Uh, I well, love NFL ready. I think just you know you don't have to mature him too much. He's so him. NFL ready. I love Josh Allen. I mean Josh Rosen. I'm sorry, uh, and I think Josh Rosen is going to be an elite quarterback in the NFL. I am that high in him. I think he is one of the best quarterback prospects I've seen come out, seen come out in a while. Since um, he's probably my favorite QB prospect since Luck, to be honest. Since Luck, he, he, yeah. I mean, I was pretty high in Derek Carr, but um, he was coming from a smaller school than him. There were some question marks I am. I liked Wentz, but Wentz was coming from a small school. I had some questions about him. Uh, yeah, I would say he's been my he's my highest since luck. Okay, that's fair. Um, I know we're talking about QBs in the first round draft. Can I tell you someone who is not going to be in the first round or the second round? Lamar Jackson, get him off your draft board. Yeah, he's not a fucking first round quarterback. Stop. He can't. He can't fucking pass in the pocket. You know, and that was Marcus Mariota's main concern coming out of the draft. Show your fucking face. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, he, I think he does have some pocket throws, but he has very sloppy footwork uh, when I watch him on tape. And I don't like rushing quarterbacks in the NFL. The NFL is too physical. You're going to get hurt if you try playing like that in the NFL. It's not that I don't think awesome. he's athletic enough or – Gifted enough, but you're going to get hurt if you try playing like that in the NFL. And I agree with you, but I do think he'll be a first-rounder. But I don't want any yeah, part of, Lord, of Lamar Jackson. I don't want any part of him. Nope. I think he's going to be a gimmick quarterback. We've seen this a thousand times before. He doesn't have that big body like Cam, and even he gets hurt in the NFL. I don't like it. He uh, Cam's a fucking van, dude. Like He's a big guy. He can throw his weight around. Cam the van. Lamar Jackson is 200 fucking pounds, and he's 6'4". Yeah, he's like, well, he's like, say he's like 215. I'm like, yeah, bullshit. That guy's the skinniest man I've ever seen. Yeah, no, no. Even I, He I, might I, be skinnier than Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen is small. But Josh Rosen is like proportional. He also doesn't throw his body out there. Yeah, he doesn't run at all, really. He, he Sometimes he tries to gain time. But he's has like negative rushing yards every year because he's not trying to gain, gain yards. And that's smart, though. That's a smart thing to do. He that's all I want on my quarterback, to be honest. The smart, and I don't think the Browns are going to take him. I really don't think that. I think after his comments, I just don't think he's going to. No, I could see him going somewhere, though. I mean, there's some QB knee uh, teams in this draft. Uh, <laughs> I could see, let's see. I'm going to look at a few teams listening here. The Broncos strike out on Kirk Cousins. Oh, not the Broncos. Sorry. I forgot how early they were this year, to be honest. Um, Steelers, I could see. I could see the Cardinals. I could see the Jaguars. I could see a few of these teams, if they strike out, going for this guy late if they need to and there's nobody else available. But um, I could easily see him dropping in the first round, man. I don't I don't like him. I really don't. I don't think he'll – I think he might have a couple – a year or two in the NFL, but I don't think he's a long-term quarterback. I think the reason he'll have that in the NFL is mostly because people are just going to try to be figuring him out. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think he's going to have that much success in the NFL, by the way. Yeah. I think the year is being pretty much. Maybe he'll have a couple of good games. If he can – if he can – he has good arm strength. 
if he can work on his footwork, work on work on uh, his fundamentals a little bit and get us a little bit more actually on that ball. But you know what they say at this point in their career, their actually is what it is. It's not awful, but it's not great. And then he uses his speed like a Russell Wilson to gain time in the pocket and try to and, yeah. tr- and not try to get downfield with it. That's why I like to see a quarterback use his speed. I like to see him use it like Wentz, like Ru- like Russell Wilson. Like um like Vic did later on in his career, like Tony Definitely. Romo did. Like um be honest, I was I was really too young to really give a lot of examples like Cole Pepper or McNabb, but I know Aaron they weren't Rogers the fastest. Shit, though. Aaron Rodgers, there you go. Um it's Stafford, yeah. But it's all about it's all about making time with that speed. It's not, if I mean if it's wide open, you got nothing, you take that. But that's, that's not three yards, and then you slide. Yeah, exactly. You slide, and you don't. I don't think you would. Nope. You know, you, you try to do that Vic slide where he slides and then spins yeah, and takes exactly. off. That was that was badass, to be honest. But yeah, well, Michael Vick's shit. So. <laughs> um, whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Um, um, let's talk about a, another quarterback, though. All right. Um, my number two on my board. And it's close between. Uh, two guys, but my number two is Baker, and I and I've I've been, I've been going back and forth between him and Rosen. My number two is Baker. Uh what about what about you? Um, I I do have uh, Baker Mayfield there, and I don't understand. Um, a lot of people are like, oh well, he's undersized. I'm like the guy's like six one, like he's not undersized by any mean. I know he yeah. doesn't have the best arm strength. Um, I know he has an attitude issue. I like Baker Mayfield, and I think if you're going to take a quarterback, man, I'm not going to try, try to drop to Sam Darnold. I don't want fucking Sam Darnold. I mean, I'm not a his, fan of Sam Darnold. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, his. Huge reasons. Yeah. What? What'd you say? Well, I was just saying I'm not a fan of Sam Darnold, so maybe that factors into why Baker's too. Yeah. But I like Baker Mayfield. He's kind of like a gunslinger. He kind of he wants to win. I think that's important in the NFL. Yeah. As a quarterback. He has a desire to win at all costs. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I'm with you. I think, yeah, I, I like Baker. Uh, his competitive, competitiveness is unmatched, and I think it's great, and I also think it can be a problem. There's t- incidents in college where he was seen grabbing his crotch on the sideline, gesturing at the Kansas players because they didn't shake his hand before the game. Kids. It's like nine-year-old kids. I mean, it's just like – it was funny. I, I, don't I get I get the competitive na- miss in this man, but you're on live television and it's fucking the Kansas Jayhawks, man. Grow up. They suck. Know, Just yeah. keep their like, ass in the field. Like, they're not doing dick, man. Like, you know that. You know that. You're Oklahoma, dude. You guys are like a number two seed at the time. But his stats are insane. I mean, they are. Yeah, dude. Less than his than accuracy that. is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But one thing you got to question, he plays in the Big 12. I and mean, Big 12 people always put up those crazy numbers. And you got to take that with a grain of salt. But that said, I do love Baker. I think he uses – he's not even that fast, but he is creative in the pocket. He gets himself uh, – He's resourceful. Makes, he can dodge out of a sack. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'll need to go to the right fit. I think you'll have to find a coach that will play – to his strengths instead of just trying to put him into an NFL offense and say do it. They needed somebody to build an offense around him. That's but I do with Johnny Menzel. Not that Johnny Menzel is good, but they forced they were trying to force Johnny Menzel to be an NFL quarterback or what you would perceive as an NFL quarterback. Yeah, and I don't I mean do that. We never really got a good chance to see what Johnny Menzel could be. He just got on drugs and it just never really happened. Um, we only got a couple games out of him so and that's a comparison people like to throw around with Baker. Um, I mean, it's a tough one not to make. I don't think of the same player. I think Baker is a is a different player. But with those short quarterbacks, I mean, he's not Drew Brees. He's not Russell Wilson. So there's only so many comparisons you can make. I know. I understand. Um, okay, so you have him at two. We're just kind of um... – And I think he will go first round. I think he will go top yeah, ten, in my so. opinion. I, I think that's more than okay. To put him as a top ten quarterback, and he deserves it. I think he deserves it. Mm-hmm. And I think you're a fool if you don't think otherwise. I think Rosen's top five for sure. I think he, but I think I, I have a hard time seeing him slip past the Giants. 
Yeah. You know, and actually, I just want to uh, dive into who I have at three. Who's your three guy? Josh Allen. Josh Allen's your number three? Josh Allen's my number three guy because you're starting to uh, see a bigger emergence from smaller schools, big guys that can slam. You know, we just have to look at Carson Wentz. Big guy, he can slam. I actually, I don't hate Josh Allen, but I think he's a project. So that's yeah. my only is that if you're gonna if you're gonna take him, like if the Redskins can get him with their first pick, I'm a hundred percent about that, and have him learn under Alex Smith for a little bit. I think that's yeah. Okay. I'm not starting Josh Allen my first fucking season. That's okay. Yeah, I see. I'm just not a Josh Allen guy, man. I know. You're I don't want Josh any Allen. part of him at all. I can see why people like like. I mean, his arm is probably the biggest arm I've ever seen. I'm gonna be. I'm going to be very interested to see what miles per hour he starts clocking at the combine. But um, but his accuracy, especially in a bad conference, I know he was hurt this year, but even last year, his, his, his completion percentage is more. He's thrown 56% completion percentage. Like, I know. Trust me, that I know. doesn't get better. That does not get better at his age. Um. I, to me, he's Jake Locker. People say Carson Wentz. I see like everyone wants their next Carson Wentz. He's Jake Locker to me. He's a he's a runner who can throw, not a not a, not a thrower who can run. Um, he's got a big body, but I do not think he's gonna be an NFL quarterback. I think he's gonna be a disappointment. He's a Jamarcus Russell type guy to me. He's see, I don't know, man. I think I think you know he did mention. The bad conference. I think some of that plays in that he didn't really have a supporting team. Like he didn't really have a supporting cast. Yeah, but I mean, he had less drop passes than Josh Rosen had this year. That's what he did. That's what I. I that's what I read. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he, he, I got him, receivers. I got him down at three. Um, don't, I think it's just because if you can mold him to what you want, I think you put a good team around him. I think he could be something for you. No, I mean, I see what you're saying. He has a huge arm. Um, and some Patrick Mahomes comparisons in there. But the difference for me is Patrick Mahomes was actually successful in college. I know it was a Big 12, but yeah. Um, still, I still, with that all that said, I still see Josh Allen being at minimum uh, top 15. I see closer to a top 10 pick for him. I can see him going as early as one to the Browns. Uh, I could the one person. Oh, uh, just a quick note is people have talked about a lot of people going to the Browns. Josh Rosen's a tough one because why do you want to pick a guy who doesn't want to play for you? Yeah. Um, Baker's a tough one for me because if you're a new GM, you take a, an undersized quarterback uh, and he doesn't succeed. I mean, they're like, why'd you take him? If you take a six-five guy with a huge arm, they're like, all right, well. I mean, you took you you took you, you shot sense. your shot, yeah. Like, you, like I saw what you thought saw there, but when you take an undersized guy like that, that's how you find find your way to get fired. Um, granted, with all this said, uh, Josh Allen didn't throw a lot of picks. He threw fifteen at his uh, last uh, two years ago and six this year. Uh, I think that's something to be said, but. My number, my number three guy, even though I'm not a huge fan of this guy either, is Sam Darnold, and he will go top ten. And this is where there's a lot of good quarterbacks. I think uh, a lot of project. I think Darnold's a project as well, but he actually has some completion percentage. I mean, two years ago he threw, he had an off year this year. But two years ago he threw for 67 percent completion percentage and 31 touchdowns, and only nine picks. This year he threw 63.1, 26 touchdowns, 13 picks. That's worrisome. He also had a bunch of fumbles. I think that is also very worrisome because you can pick, you can fix interceptions. You can teach them to do the reads better. Sometimes people just can't hold on to the ball. That's a tough one to fix. Um, yeah, I think fumbles at that level, though, there's going to be bigger people hitting you in the NFL. Yeah. So that's worrisome. There's also the USC factor. It's hard not to see all these quarterbacks coming out of USC and failing and not wanting Darnold. I mean, who was the last good one? Carson Palmer? Yeah, basically. I don't know um, any other good. Mark Sanchez, I guess. Matt Castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Patriots. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. 
I don't love him, but I do think he's a project. I do think he could be very good if you if you give him some time. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Josh Rosen's just I mean he's head and shoulders above every other quarterback in this draft right now. I think I think there's some ceiling to these guys, but I mean that's who they all are. Um, I, Mark I think Jackson Josh Rosen is your is your best pick. But I think he has to go to a team that's going to work. That's obviously a stupid, obvious thing to say. But, like, I don't think Josh Rosen works for the Browns. No way. Yeah. That fucking shit's not happening. Um, just as a caveat. But um, So, I actually, my number four was Sam Darnold. I don't want to talk about him much anymore. <laughs> like, I don't like him. Too many turnovers. Yeah. I think he's going to be, you know. I think he's too much of a project from USC and just USC alone. I just I can't trust the USC guy. So, so are those your four that you think can go in the first round? Uh yeah, those are. I mean, those are the only ones that are really going to go in the first round. Uh, and, and you I also think Lamar, Jackson, Lamar right? Jackson? Jackson, because I think Lamar Jackson might go in the first round. I think someone might be dumb enough to take him in the first round. So, do you would he be your five on your list, or is he just five? Uh, Who? Lamar Jackson, which is your five quarterback. Mm, I would say. I don't know. I don't really. I really just don't like him. Yeah. I don't like him as a quarterback. I would say he's seven or six. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, maybe Folk from Washington State. Yeah. Oh God, I hate Folk. I, I'm take. I would much rather take him over. He has no him. arm. I'd much rather Lamar Jackson take a care. shot in his athleticism. I don't care. Six um, seven percent completion rate this year, though. I don't care. Yards. His he arm. Can, he can Alex Smith this shit, dude. His arm is terrible, man. Terrible. I, these, Alex Smith has a better arm than him. His arm is literally one of the weakest in college football. I have no part of him. I don't think he'll do anything in the NFL. I don't know. I, I think I think I would rather have him than Lamar Jackson. But we'll talk about some of our late round quarterbacks. Um, I th- like I said, Lamar Jackson. I could easily see somebody taking a shot at him. Like see like the Jaguars or somebody. Uh, there's one other guy that I think could find himself in the first round. I personally. Do not believe he will, Can I but guess I do it? do think he'll get talks. What? Can I guess it? Guess, guess it, it, yeah. Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. Yeah. And I think he'll get talks. I don't think he will, but I th- I do think there will be conversations about uh, him being in the first round. And, I mean, granted, he had great college stats. I mean – his college stats were not that far off of what Patrick Mahomes was, and he went in the first round early. Um, they both come out of the Big 12, so you, one thing I've, I've been saying this the whole time, you take Big 12 quarterbacks with a grain of salt, and I love Mahomes, and you got to really look at the film, you got to look at what they bring in tangible, and you can't just read into the stats. With that said, here are the, the stats. stats. Are bloated. The stats are a little bloated. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, here are the stats. Um, he threw 65% completion percentage. Tell me those stats, baby. Um, four thousand nine hundred and four yards. I like it up. Thirty-seven touchdowns and nine picks. That's pretty good. I mean, senior year, he was a good quarterback. I mean, I'm, I'll give that to him. He, he has a big arm. I'm gonna be interested in see what what he does at the combine. Um, but his, I, but his accuracy is a little a little off. Yeah, um, but I mean, sixty-five percent completion percentage is not bad. But again, no, 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 it's not bad at all. But like on the deep ball. Yeah, bad. I agree. So um, it's like when you say it's like, oh, well, he has a big arm. It's like I agree, he has a big arm. But so do a lot of people. It's just a matter of can you put it in that little window? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think he's a pro. To me, he's a project quarterback. I see him as a Davis Webb type guy, where he's got a big arm. He uh, played in a system that's not fit for the NFL. He's going he's gonna to have to get developed. And he's got size, the arm. Maybe you can develop him into an NFL quarterback. Where do you think he gets taken, though? You think second he gets second Yeah, second. Do you, what, what I was saying is second, real, third. I was thinking maybe that um, a team like the Steelers or Steelers somebody like, would tra- trade their first. I would, I would love, I would love to see Mason Rudolph go to the Steelers. To be a hundred percent. I would also love that. You know, oh. Big Ben, him. I mean, how how tall is Mason Rudolph? He's six four. Six five. Five. Okay, six five. So, um, I would so love he's to only like ten pounds lighter than Big Ben. And I think people, I think teams are going to start taking that approach to NFL quarterbacks. The Aaron Rodgers thing. 
Does yeah. she take a guy? I mean, especially. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, for a while, it was always like, oh, take him and start him because he might do okay. And he'll just learn. Yeah, you know, especially with with Big Ben, though. He can be done any day, so. Yeah, and he gets hurt like, all the time. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think so. Another guy I just want to talk about. One guy that I really want the Redskins to grab, if they can. Um, you can guess it if you'd like, but I don't think you're going to be able to guess it. Um, quarterback? The quarterback? Um, uh, is he a D1 quarterback? He's a D1 quarterback. Is it Woodside? No. That's my guy. We'll talk about him a little bit more. Okay. Uh, it's Riley Ferguson from Memphis. Okay. Um, I think that he could be a good late round pick. Um, obviously, coming from Memphis, it's not a sexy name, but it doesn't matter. I think he's got some good size. He's, he can be a gunslinger, but I, I like him. I'm just reading his stats right here. I mean, 4,200 4, yards, 36 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Um, he's going to need to bulk up a little bit. He's at 210, and he's 6'4". I was making fun of Lamar Jackson for being 6'2 and 200. I can't not make fun of this guy. But um, and actually, I did I actually did watch Phil on him. Did you? Because I'm the best. Um, but uh, he, he looks he, – he'll like, you know who he's throwing to, and he, they have to fix that, like, right away. Yeah, I'll give you guys – You can see I'll, I'll give you guys a little uh, sneak peek on – my uh, my sleeper quarterback this year, and I'm going to – I watched a little film. I'm going to watch some more, and I hope that next week we can talk about our sleeper quarterbacks more and give you guys some guys to look for. Uh, but Logan Woodside. Uh, Logan from, Woodside, okay. Tell me about Logan Woodside. Logan Woodside's from Toledo. He's hey. a very, He's a very accurate quarterback. Um, right. He – he went through a drill. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was basically like uh, it was an accuracy drill where and Rosen got 22 seconds or something like that. He got like 25, and the next closest was like 40 something seconds. Okay. He uh last year when he had all that great Toledo team with with uh, Roberts and uh, Kareem Hunt, he threw four. 4,129 yards and 45 touchdowns. Yeah, he's, nice. uh, he's 6'2", 210. He's a small guy, but uh, he is, he's been a very prolific quarterback those last two years. He's a very accurate quarterback. Um, I think that he could, he could be something in the NFL. I'm going to watch some more film on him, but I do like him as a late-round sleeper. Uh, but – yeah, I'm, I don't want to go too much into it till I really get to look at these films for you guys. I mean, those are really good stats, and you know, he's keeping it up too. Those that that, that could be like a little treat for someone. They could Kirk, you know, we go back to the Redskins because we were just talking about Kirk Cousins, but they could do if they took like um, the perceived starter in the first, and then take this guy a little later. Why not? Yeah, I agree. I mean, That'd be you good. can. I, 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 I heard of him a little bit just because I follow a lot of Midwest bloggers. Yeah. So like, that's the only reason I've heard of it. I haven't really gone in depth. I knew he was decent. He said Logan Woodside. Um, I, think, I just want to ask you, what do you think about Kenny Hill? Kenny Hill? Uh, I, I see th- Bubba. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. All right. Big 12 guy here. Um, <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Thrill. He was a big time recruit coming out of high school. Uh, was supposed to be their successor, Johnny Menzel. He had some time, some some flashes. I really just think he's a college quarterback. I don't think he'll do anything in the NFL. But uh, I'd say let, let's uh, let's go ahead and save some of this uh, late round QB talk when we really can dive into it this week and give him something something based off film and not just uh, just guessing off the top of our head of what we remember. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. All we're right, guys. All day. And then we're going to rebuild a team soon, so keep sitting for that. Yep. Well, hopefully, it's going to be next week or the week after. We're gonna. I think we're going to start from the Browns and try to go up the draft. Uh, go up the draft oh, order yeah. a little bit. I'm so try to excited hit, to re- So excited to help the Browns out. Try to hit as many as you are. Just take over as GMs for these guys and give you our takes on what they think we should do. 
I mean, the coaches are gone now, so I guess maybe we'll suck with stuck with Hugh. But we'll you know we'll decide that next week, hopefully. Um, I enjoyed this a lot. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, you have anything to say, Ryan? Any final thoughts? I didn't enjoy this. It's horrible. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Awesome. I love football. And I love talking. <laughs> I love Monty, and I love the fact that Monty is a walking bar slad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Monty's free advertisement. I know it's awesome. Man, you know. Anytime I can talk about football and talk really loud and annoy Haley, I'm all in for it. Um, and this is the draft. We've been doing this since we were in sophomore year of high school, making mock drafts. This is our bread and butter. I love you, football. So, this is good. Yep. Um, well, I agree completely. All right, guys. Well, you just listened to the first episode, or we have it on draft. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.